what's the craziest story from you of you performing what's the craziest thing that's happened uh well uh if if, well the the craziest thing on stage was i was performing uh, i forgot where it was but it was a lady in the audience um who was talking being very talkative and you know i i went through the process of how you supposed to deal with a heckler how they say disarm them use the kill them with kindness and do the joke i did every step in the heckler joke book dealing with manual i did everything and then i finally came to a point where i was like okay ma'am you know these people aren't really they're not here for you you know they're they're here to see us this is our show and and you know can you just you know and the dude she was with was not saying anything like he just kept letting her talk and i'm i'm in my head i'm like bro why would you not stop that or just say hey let's let's get out of here you're obviously too drunk let's go home because i've already done my part i've done what i can in every sense of the way to stop this and make it you know something where it's still kind of cool and so at late so late on cuz she kept saying it during punchline and I'm like, I can't get that moment back. I can't get that punchline moment back. You know what I'm saying? So you're you're ruining this moment. Ugh. So I said, um, I forgot exactly how I said it, but I basically told her to shut the fuck up. So at that moment, the dude who hadn't said anything about how she was acting the entire show, hadn't said anything, says, hey, man, you watch how you talk to my lady. And I was like, oh, so now you care about respect. Now you care about how with the energy that's happening here. Now you care, and he says, "Man, I, I, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up there and uh, beat the hell out of you." Now again, let me be very clear. I love, I'm a peaceful person. I love people. I do. Uh, but again, I'm also a human being. So when he said that, and this is why I say it was weird because when he said it my immediate response was hey man if you come up on this stage i'm gonna take this mic stand and shove it up your ass <laughs> i promise you that and i said it with such a straight face and such anger you can feel the gasp in the entire club because it was packed it was packed in there and so they finally came and took the dude out and uh but I still had what, maybe another thirty minutes left to go in the show. <laughs> so uh, after they escorted him out, you know, uh, I think the first thing I said after that was, "So, how you guys been doing?" <laughs> <laughs> and it, whatever I said, it the energy came back, and we finished the show, and that that was the weirdest. But um, nah, man, it it I I really tried not to. Um, I really tried not to be uh, confrontational. And so I've tried, I've handled it another way. And this is the other way who, and again, my, um, I, I really wish I would have recorded it. So I'm telling you ahead of time that it wasn't recorded. But so I was at the comedy store and I had to get ready for a late night set. Now, you know this, you know how this goes, Richie. If you're getting ready for something specific, the time on stage is important. Like, I can't mess this time over. I got to really work on these these jokes. And I have five minutes. So I'm on stage at the comedy store. And um, not even a minute into the set, the girl's just yelling. I don't know, something incoherent. Just yelling. And, I'm, and, I, and I said to her, because I didn't have time to go through the steps, the manual of shutting down the heck. I don't have time. I got five minutes. So I say, ma'am. Listen, I, I know you're enjoying yourself right now, but I really do have, and I, I talked to her straight up. I wasn't even trying to be funny. I said, I have five minutes. I really got to get through these set, this, these jokes. Just let me finish. And she said, I don't care. I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck. My name is such and such, and, and, and I work blah, blah, blah. I don't care. And she's with a group of people, and no one in the group is telling her to be quiet. Not one single person. So... 
Uh, I try to keep going into the set and she's still yelling again. And then I said something to where, get out, get her out. And then they came to take her out. And uh, and then her friend says, you really shouldn't act like that. And then again, I'm like, what the, what the, what, what was this before? So they escort her out and I'm heated because I didn't have, I needed to get that set done. So I'm heated, right? So I'm driving home and I'm like, I don't know why I can't let this one go. So I remember what she told me. She told me her name and she told me where she worked. So uh, the next day, uh, she worked at the Standard, downtown Los Angeles. So the next day, uh, I go downtown Los Angeles to the Standard and I got to find out exactly where she is. So uh, I called and I pretended I was from 1-800-Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yeah, I'm from 1-800-Flowers. I have a delivery for you know such and such. And they said, and it, it's amazing, by the way, they will easily tell you where someone is when you just say you're from 1-800-Flowers. <laughs> Everyone wants flowers. And so, so immediately, uh, they told me where she was. She's a hairdresser. So I walk in, I see her working, doing her thing. And then uh, I walk up and I said, hey, and I kid you not, she had no idea who I was. She had no idea. And she's like, can I help you? And I said, you don't remember me, huh? She says, uh, no. And I said, I'm the comedian from, from last night. And she's like, and you could see her face went pale. Wow. She automatically, like, she's like, you're not supposed to be here. This is, this is my place of business. And I said, where the fuck do you think I was last night? <laughs> where did you, you think I was? What did you think I was doing? She's like, you can't be here. And I said, I'm leaving. And she had customers. She had customers there. It was, it was packed. It was people there. And so uh, she says, uh, you got to go. And then the girl who, who thought I was from 1-800-Flowers immediately picks up the phone and says, we're going to need somebody here. He's not from 1-800-Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. It will not be anything extra. I said, I just wanted to come down here to tell you, to show you what it feels like for someone to interrupt you while you're trying to work for you to understand what it takes away from you performing when someone says they don't give a fuck about what you're doing when you're doing it. And so, um, the, 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 the she's working on somebody's hair and people are looking at it. Yeah. So anyone, everybody, I'm, I'm going to go, this is where we're good. And as I'm walking out, the manager of the uh, hotel comes up, and I had to stop her before she said anything. I said, no, no, we're good. I'm leaving. I said, just so you know, that person right there represents you guys when she leaves here. And if you don't believe me, I have a video of her acting up last night. And the lady says, sir, I'm so sorry. I apologize. And I, and I'm so sorry. I can't, I can't apologize enough. I'm so sorry about this. I said, no, no, we're good. I said, I did exactly what I wanted to do. We're good. I made my point. I'm going to head out. And so as I'm leaving, I got to go to the ATM to get money to get out of the thing. And I get to the ATM and the guy whose hair she was working on when I walked in uh, came up to me. He's like, dude, that shit was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, and so, yeah, that's the weirdest situation. That's I'll tell you I, how I, epic that story is, is that, you know, as comedians, we have lunches together and dinners and stuff and we talk all the time. I've heard this story about you through several different people about how <laughs> epic it was that you went to the heckler's place of work and heckled her. <laughs> and you know what happens that was weird is that every year it is circulated through social media. Every, every <laughs> year I get a reminder of that moment and then it gets retweeted and re reached and shared through many comedians. I'm like, I, that's my only folk story as a comedian. <laughs> 